Hi Jacqueline, you've been recognised for some of the tremendous work you've been doing within the Rindrush generation. How do you feel about that? Well, it is nice to be acknowledged for the work that you do, but what's more important, it's really for the people who are the victims and the survivors of the Windrush scandal, because, you know, they're a very overlooked people. And the fact that, you know, an issue that affects them, you know, the lives of very ordinary men and women who made that journey from across the seas, from the Caribbean, from Africa, from Asia, ended up here to try and help rebuild this country. The fact that an issue around the injustices that they've experienced has resulted in this award, for me, is what makes it so special. So when you're looking back at Great Britain of the 70s and 60s and comparing it to um, Britain of today, has, have we have much progress in the way of race relations? And um, how has, you know, platforms like Black that empower black people and black excellence awards. How has that kind of helped change the narrative? I think the black excellence awards are an excellent way of showing that there are black people in the society who are doing incredible things and making a difference. And I would imagine that there weren't such a thing in the 60s and the 70s. So all power to organizations like Powerful Media and other organizations who host these awards ceremonies and activities. Um, in terms of our condition and how things have changed, I, you know, I, I'm, I was born in the 60s. I grew up listening to my parents talk about the stories of their experiences when they first came. You know, the stories that are very familiar to us all about no blacks, no Irish, no dogs. Um, you know, their experiences of coming with qualifications that weren't then being recognized, even though, you know, their qualifications were from actually, you know, British institutions um, and having to do jobs well below their standard, etc. Um, you know, the problems with children being excluded from school or being sent to approved schools or special schools, you know, um, a friend of mine, Bernard Cord, wrote that book in the 70s, How the British Educational uh, system makes the black child educationally subnormal and that's still very relevant today we're still seeing those issues issues around criminal justice disproportionate sentencing stop and search um the fact that if you're a black man you're more likely to be charged for an offense um you're more likely to be harshly sentenced all of those issues are still very relevant today and we see it in the fact that there is report after report there was david lammy's report into the criminal justice system that was quite damning there was Wendy Williams's report into the Windrush lessons learnt. Um, we've had Dame Angiolini's report. Just two days ago, the Equalities and Human Rights Commission have produced a report which is damning and actually found, it went further than all the others, it actually found that the Home Office, so therefore the government broke the law regarding equalities legislation. And you know, there are a whole plethora of reports on the 9th of December, I'm giving evidence to a parliamentary committee. Um, there's a call out for evidence for the Disparity and Race Committee. I know Labour have got a commission looking at the Windrush. It's just endless. And we, why are we in 2020 still needing to do all these reports and all this research? And it's because things haven't improved along any measure. We see it definitely with immigration and the Windrush scandal, but we see it in the criminal justice system, we see it in education at all levels, we see it in terms of enterprise and entrepreneurship, who gets the loans, how the banks treat people, we see it in health, the disparities in health. We've recently had data about, you know, how many black women die in childbirth birth disproportionately. We see it with the statistics about COVID-19. So our condition hasn't really uh, improved in my mind. There are a number of people in our community who are doing very well, exceptionally well, but generally speaking as a whole, and in terms of looking at social economics uh, and welfare and well-being, we're still really struggling. And I think, you know, the reports are confirming that, but what is lacking is a plan, a strategic plan and real action to even out those uh, inequalities, those disparities, and effectively end discrimination. Right. Thank you so much, Jacqueline, for your time. It's been real great talking to you.